Hey everyone, welcome to a new episode of Dev Radio where we are bringing to you experts who are doing really amazing things in the Azure ecosystem. Uh, today, I'm bringing back Anthony and Pete. If you remember from Happy Hour, they were the proud <laughs> of our DevOps. You guys are Happy Hour? Oh, yeah. <laughs> and um, at, the, uh, at the corner of our screen is our new guest, Cynthia, today. Cynthia, how are you doing? Good, how are you? Doing well. And so uh, today I'm going to get out of the way because I'm really excited to uh, for all of you to see this. The API uh, API management uh, landing zone accelerated. Did I get it right? You did get it right. I know yeah. it is well, so, a lot of letters. Difficult to say together. <laughs> well, I, I, you know what? I just treat the audience and myself like we're completely new to it, never heard of it before. I know it's pretty new stuff. So um, I, I'd love for you to just break it down, like from an introductory perspective, what it is and, you know, why we should be interested. Will do. Thank you. Well, hi, everyone. We're very excited. This is going to be a multi-part series where we will start with the overview today. We're going then to go over the design areas in the, another session, the reference implementation, and last but not least, rounding out with our user experience, as well as a short demo. So Sydney, do you mind flipping over to our slides? Absolutely. Let me actually put this on the side so you can see the whole slide. There we go. Awesome. Thank you. So when we think about adopting Azure as a platform, there's actually three different pillars that we think about. First, starting with, is your environment ready for the cloud or has a lot of training been in place to really adopt a slightly different concept moving from on-prem to the cloud. And then we go into the adopt phase, which we will be focusing on today for the Landing Zone Accelerator. After you've made the decision to move on to the cloud, you now think about, oh, how do I quickly get into the mindset of putting a lot of workloads on the cloud? What are some of the different configurations I need to do? How does management differ now that um, I'm no longer seeing my own data center, my own racks. And then last but not least, you continually want to think about how do I ensure whatever I put on Azure is well architected? What are ways that we can ensure these are um, architected in a way that it is sustainable? It is, uh, we're able to find out monitoring and, and all the good stuff. <laughs> And before we go into that, I, I then want to hand it over to Anthony to talk about some of the challenges we run into when we start adopting the cloud. Totally. So um, I would say if you want to bump me to the next slide, high level um, common challenges we run into as folks move to the cloud are how do you shift mindsets from a sort of profoundly centralized, um, tightly controlled, tightly coupled kind of the traditional uh, high wall, deep moat model into something that is still safe, sane, secure, and scalable, but allows folks to build, to iterate, to um, continue sort of forth uh, adopting and expanding. Can you uh, bump the slide for me? Uh, I think, uh, Cynthia, can you move oh, to the yeah. slide before? Beautiful. So sort of, um, I talked about the kind of lack of trust, desire for control. How do you still provide a safe and sane structure, but allow folks to sort of grow and evolve? The other two pieces that Enterprise Scale helps a lot with is creating a strongly opinionated accelerator. So this is not the only way to implement APIM, but we worked really hard to roll in best practices to create something that fits in most enterprises organization, but still allows you some flexibility in designing and architecting. So this accelerator helps to speed that up. And it also thinks both about the day one implementation as well as the day two implementation. How do you handle uh, iterating your APIs? How do you handle versioning your APIs? How do you handle uh, going from one set of definitions to another set of definitions in a scalable and sort of safe, sane way? Um, and that's really what the accelerator kind of stood out to do, uh, create an opinionated, well-structured and sort of, uh, 
growable or expandable process for laying that out. Uh, and Pete, I'll throw it over to the third one for you. <laughs> yeah. So maybe you want to move to the next one? Perfect. Um, so yeah, the way the, the landing zone accelerator is um, set up, like Anthony talked about, is you know it's an approach based on a reference implementation. So what you'll see is you know essentially what we have in API management is a like a single region approach to how we would deploy this. Along with that, there's design recommendations that sort of cover general principles on how you would deploy API management. So certain things like when you deploy the development, um, the, the actual developer side of it uh, and the portal, what do you want to use for security? So you can go through and you can read some of the guidance around um, what to consider for the developer portal, how you would secure it, some of the network considerations as well, um, as well as breaking it down into a true reference implementation. Like I said before, is really it's you know a lot of guidance around um, like a single region. Uh, it talks through how you would deploy sort of an API management with an app gateway, and then how you would actually break the policies down and deploy those with a uh, with an actual runner, whether it's DevOps, GitHub, bring your own. Um, you get some pretty good guidance and visuals based on that implementation. It's also explicitly designed to be expandable. So it's a full, the reference implementation is a full blown hello world. So you can sort of yep. see both sides of it. But if you decided that, hey, you wanted to unify on prem and uh, cloud based API management, you could very easily grow this implementation into that. Or if you said, hey, I don't need everything to be private, you could also yep. grow into that from here as well. Uh, so it's designed to be flexible. Yeah, like Anthony said, there's some pretty good guidance there too around, you know, just like a backend pool and how it uh, deploys two sets of functions. So that way you can even see and test uh, true end to end like hello world. Uh, when the function gets deployed out there, you can see what it means from like a private endpoint to make sure that it's secured. Hit the front end API, uh, front end app gateway and actually flow all the way through the API management to the gateway. And while we do say that it is, it gives you a hello world example, we also want to say that the infrastructure that it you deploy is actually production ready when you start putting your workloads in the back end. Yep. We just put in a hello world example more as a way of validating that the whole deployment has gone through, all the different networking has been hooked up, but really to, I think, Anthony and Pete's point, we really want to make this very flexible. So we understand that a lot of the resources that we're deploying may exist already. For instance, you may have a key vault that you're using that you want to share. Or you have a DevOps agent already deployed in one of your virtual network. You're more than welcome to bring a lot of those resources into this landing zone accelerator as well. Well, that sounds pretty interesting. Definitely very flexible and definitely sound like we just um, tiptoed into the rabbit hole here. So um, you did say you're all coming back for multiple sessions. Can you just like for the sake of myself and the audience, just, you know, you know, talk, um, talk a little bit about um, what you're planning to cover over the next couple of sessions? Well, not so, deep. <laughs> totally. So I think in our next session, we know we covered this is the this is the example of what we're doing. The next session, we're going to talk through some of the design decisions that we made. How did we maximize flexibility? What have we thought about as folks are going to kind of expand and work through this? Cynthia, you want to do the next piece? <laughs> And, and yeah, and then we're, go, we're going to go through the reference implementation. So this is one of the many we're hoping to come out with where we have, to Pete's earlier point, a single region deployment. And then we're going to finish out with a walkthrough of the user experience as well as a short demo where we hope the demo gods will bless us with. Oh, awesome. Yeah, well, you know, we've, we've already said it so, so that means we'll have minimum demo bugs. Uh, <laughs> couple of weeks so really looking forward to having you all back um i mean i think pete mentioned there was going to be a, a a link um if, if i if i just want to get started with it where can i go you don't have to share it right now because i can put it in the description box for this video but like if i was interested want to read more about it wanted to start digging in before the next session where would i go There is a GitHub link. I don't have it with me readily available. Cynthia, I don't know if you have it, but we can share that GitHub link, which starts to talk through the process. You can actually see what's going on within the Azure repo. Also, so yeah, we'll make sure we put that GitHub link in the description box for everybody who's watching this recording. So thank you all for coming on. Really looking forward to parts two through uh, infinity as necessary uh, to show everybody, you know, uh, um, 
this um, accelerator and really um, not just, you know, how it works, but like digging deep into examples. So thank you all, um, Anthony, Pete, Cynthia, all for jumping on. Matt just posted the link in the chat. He beat me to it. I'll make sure it's in the description box. It's all exciting. So for those of us who are watching us on Dev Radio, make sure you subscribe to our channel. Make sure you um, set up the notifications so you know when we go live. And we definitely going to continue to bring you great people and great content and all the remaining parts of the series. So thank you, uh, all three of you, for jumping on today. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.